Customers often ask us which upright exercise bike is right for them. So this tutorial is all about showing you the difference between the bottom end and the top end of upright exercise bikes. The answer of course depends on what are your needs and what's your budget. But generally, bikes tend to have most features in common, it's just the type and size and ability increases as the budget goes up. You can see from this video footage the substantial difference between the two bikes we have in the video. But we'll focus on the larger one with more features and you can understand some of the things you've got to give up to get cheaper ones. A classic example is the handlebars. On the cheapest ones the handlebars are not adjustable, but as you can see here they're fully adjustable so you can lean forward, sit upright or even lean back and have the handlebars come all the way to you. There's also a drink holder for you to be able to put a drink, not all models have this. And you can see from the way that she's shaking that bike, this is a good, solid, strong bike, and the smaller bikes are obviously much smaller and have less steel in them. One difference between bikes is whether they've got a one-piece or a three-piece crank. A one-piece crank is a single metal bar bent into shape that's obviously weaker, and a three-piece crank, more expensive to make, but is three individual pieces bolted together, gives you more strength and will last longer. All seats tend to be height adjustable for tall or short people. But the best bikes also have what's called reach adjustment, so the bike seats can be adjusted backwards and forwards to bring you closer or further away from the console and the handlebars. All the bikes we sell at Fit Online have an oblong shaped foot, and this allows you to adjust for uneven floor surfaces so you don't get wobble in the bike. But the foot plates do vary. Large, comfortable foot plates like this with a strap over them are on the best models, and, the model, and they do get smaller the less you pay. The seat size and the seat material also vary significantly, from the small foam padded seats all the way up to large comfortable gel padded seats. The size of the screen and the colour of the screen also varies. Obviously the more money you spend, the screen size and the screen display type will increase, but also the number of things that are displayed on the screen from just a single display that rotates through to a multi-colour dot matrix display. A major area of variance between the good bikes and the basic bikes is the level of heart rate measurement. All bikes these days tend to come with hand pulse measurement, which means you put your hands on them and it'll tell you a rough guide as to what your heart rate's doing. But the better models have what's called wireless heart rate, and that means you can wear a chest strap and it constantly and very accurately measures your heart rate as you exercise. Also, the better programs come on the more expensive bikes. Both the number of programs that are built in but also the type, such as heart rate control and user-definable programs, so that the computer and the console will control the tension in the bike while you tune out and watch TV. Hidden inside the bike is what's called the flywheel, and this can vary generally from 4 to 6 to 8 kilograms on a bike. Obviously, the larger the flywheel, the more expensive the bike is, but that also means it's smoother and has a better feel as you bike for long distances. Also, obviously, the more steel they use in the machine gives it a higher user capacity, some of them up to about 150 kilograms. But just watch here as Elsa transfers from the good bike down to the basic entry-level bike. You'll see a number of things here which make it obvious why you would spend more money on a bike. The size to start with is unbelievable. Also, the non-adjustable handlebars here. The manual tension controls, which start at, for example, 8 and then go to 16 or even 32 levels the more you spend very basic black and white single console screen here. This entry level bike has small foot plates here, but look at the size of the circle. With a small crank, you feel like you're a monkey at the circus. All the bikes we sell at Fit Online have magnetic resistance, which means the resistance you feel is created by two magnets moving past each other. That makes it whisper quiet and very efficient. So just compare this basic screen with the top of the line color screen we showed you before. How a bike gets its power also varies. The basic bikes just take batteries, and the middle sized bikes use AC power. The top of the line bikes tend to be self-generating, which means you don't need to plug them in at all, like this one in the display. The moment you start cycling it, the power from your legs drives the console. So in conclusion, you've got to pick the size, materials, and features that suit what you need, and pick the bike that's best for you. Good luck.